Hi everyone and welcome back. In today's video, we will continue learning about probability and start looking at compound events for when we have two or more events happening. Let's get started. Compound events is when we're finding the probability for two or more events. So for example, rolling a dice and flipping a coin or rolling two different dice. The set of all possible outcomes of one or more event is called the sample space, and you can use tables and tree diagrams to find the sample space of two or more events. In our first example, we're going to find the sample space, and we'll do this by using a tree diagram. So here's a menu and different types of sandwiches. And the question says, you randomly choose a bread and type of sandwich, find the sample space. How many different sandwiches are possible? So if we think of our sandwich, the first thing we need is bread. And we can either have wheat or sourdough. So from this point, we are going to make two branches, one for wheat and the other for sourdough. After we choose the bread, we can randomly select ham, turkey, steak, or chicken. So if we chose wheat, we could then extend the branches for each type of sandwich ham, turkey, steak, and chicken. And if we chose the sourdough, we would also extend the branches for each type of sandwich, ham, turkey, steak, and chicken. And now we can determine the number of possible outcomes. And we can do this by counting up these branches. And here we can see that we have eight different possible outcomes. We can have a wheat ham, a wheat turkey, a wheat steak, a wheat chicken, sourdough ham, sourdough turkey, sourdough steak, sourdough chicken. Wow, that was a tongue twister. So here is our first try question for this video. What if the sandwich shop added multigrain bread? Draw a tree diagram to find the sample space. How many different sandwiches will there be possible now? In our second example, we're going to be finding the sample space to help us determine the total number of possible outcomes. Unlike the last example, instead of a tree diagram, we're going to use a table. So in this question, it says, find the, t find the total number of possible outcomes of rolling a number cube, so a regular dice, and flipping a coin. So on the top of the table, we can write the possible outcomes when we roll a dice. So we can have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. And on the side, we can write the possible outcomes when we flip a coin, so heads or tails. And we're going to use H to represent heads and T to represent tails. Now inside the table, we're going to write 1H. And that's going to represent that we rolled a 1 and the coin will slip to heads. And then we'll just continue this. So 2H, 3H, 4H, 5H, and 6H. And then 1T, 2T, 3T, 4T. 5t, and finally 6t. So in this table, we can see that there are 12 possible outcomes, and all of the outcomes are found inside of the table. Here's our second try question for this video. We want to create a table to find the sample space of the total number of outcomes when spinning the spinner and randomly choosing a number from 1 to 5. Hopefully using the table to find all the possible outcomes was really familiar because you did the exact same thing when you were drawing Punnett squares in science class to determine the genotype of potential offspring if the genotype of two parents were heterozygous for the phenotype of hair, for example, in these guinea pigs. So we can see in the Punnett square, it allows us to see the sample space because in the Punnett square, we can see all the possible outcomes. We got big H, big H, so homozygous dominant. We got a big H, little H, so heterozygous. Another big H, little H, so heterozygous again. And then a little H, little H, which tells us that it's homozygous for the recessive alleles. Perhaps you've noticed from the last couple of examples, there's a quick way to determine the total number of possible outcomes. To find the total number of outcomes from event M, and event n, which just means two different events, we can multiply the possible outcomes from event m and event n. So for example, with the type of sandwiches and the bread, we had two possible bread outcomes 
and four possible sandwich types. And two times four gave us eight, which is why in this example, there were eight possible outcomes. In the second example with the coin and the dice, the dice has six possible outcomes and the coin has two possible outcomes. So six times two gives us 12, which is why this one had 12 different possible outcomes. In our third example, let's use that quick method that we just talked about to determine the total number of possible outcomes. This question says, how many different outfits can you make from the t-shirts, jeans, and shoes in the closet? Remember, compound events can occur from two or more events. Since we're looking at three different items of clothing, we have three different events. So if we look in the closet, we can see that there are four different jeans, so there are four outcomes. There are seven different t-shirts, so there are seven outcomes. And we have three different pairs of shoes, so that's three outcomes. Now we can multiply the possible outcomes for each event, which are the jeans, the t-shirts, and the shoes, and this gives us four times seven times three, which is equal to 84 possible outcomes, and therefore there are 84 different outfits. Now let's take a look at our third try it question. We can use the quick method to answer this question. How many different outfits can you make from four t-shirts, five pairs of jeans, and five pair of shoes. Now that we know how to find all the possible outcomes from two or more events, we can find the probabilities of compound events. In our fourth example, the question asks, what is the probability of rolling a number greater than four and flipping a tails? Let's use the table we created in example two to help us with this question. Now in our table, we need to look for all of the favorable outcomes of having a number greater than four and tails. The favorable outcomes are 5t and 6t. So to write out our probabilities properly, we want to write p for probability, and in parentheses, what we're looking for, or a favorable outcome we're looking for, which is greater than four and tails, close the parentheses, is then equal to two, which is the number of favorable outcomes we had, over 12, which was the total number of outcomes in our sample space. So now we can simplify this probability to 1 over 6. And as a percentage, we could get 16.67% if we rounded to the nearest hundredth. All right, so here's your fourth try question. Let's find the probability of rolling less than 5 and flipping heads. Now the last thing, remember, with probability, we want to be super careful with reading the questions. So we don't want to end up like SpongeBob here. And guess what? I'm at 40 subscribers. Who knew 40 people like math? And one of my videos has 700 views. Hashtag feeling accomplished.